Helping an elderly person cross a road is a well-known trope used to symbolize doing kind deeds, but that's exactly what happened when an old lady needed help on a very busy street in China recently. CCTV footage showed that nearly no one was stopping to let her pass, until a young man literally blocked traffic with his motorcycle. We often called such people Good Samaritans, a phrase that finds its origin in a story Jesus once told about an injured person who was ignored by every passerby except for a person from Samaria whose nationality was mentioned only because it highlighted how unlikely it was that they would stop to help. Acting in a way that benefits others is described in psychology as pro-social behavior. Why do we help others? Well, that's easy, you say, because it's the right thing to do. But that's not a scientific explanation, because it's notoriously hard to define right and wrong simply with empirical data. Psychologists suggest that it could be explained by both nature and nurture from a biological point of view, although all organisms are evolved to have traits that first and foremost promote self-survival, humans may have developed pro-social behavior because it helped our family or tribe survive, which in turn would help us. After all, you know, we're living in a society. But it could also be argued that pro-social behavior is not innate and that children learn pro-social behavior through observing others or conditioning. Indeed, acceptable pro-social behavior can look different in different cultures and times. Whatever the case, pro-social behavior is generally encouraged in most societies and so psychologists are interested in seeing what factors increase or even decrease the likelihood of someone helping in a situation. One very important influence seems to be that of social norms, which we looked at in a previous lesson. Social norms are the expectations of behavior in a particular place. Most societies assume that people will act in a pro-social way, particularly if it results in minimal cost to the helper. Pro-social behaviors may be awarded and anti-social behaviors punished. One norm is the reciprocity principle, often referred to as the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. A principle that some have observed is present in virtually every culture and religion in one way or another. Help someone and they'll probably help you too. Kindness is reciprocal. Another social norm is that of social responsibility, which is the expectation that people living in a community should provide help to those who need it, just because they need it. No expectation of the favor being returned. 90s TV sitcom Seinfeld often played on this principle for comedic purposes with background characters that were almost always antisocial. Yeah, excuse me, sir, do you have the time? There's a clock over there. <laughs> Wait. Over there. But you have a watcher. Right by the escalator. Let me see the watch. Hey! What are you, some kind of nut? <laughs> you know, we're living in a society! Poor George just wanted to know the time, and social responsibility says that there's no reason why you wouldn't just give it to him. But it's pretty funny to see him not get his way. But there are other factors known to influence pro-social behavior that have to do with the individual. For example, empathy our emotional response to another person's distress, which is even stronger if we perceive the person in need as being similar to ourselves. Mood, people in a better mood are far more likely to help others than those in a bad mood. Research even suggests that when people feel bad or depressed, they are more likely to focus inwardly towards themselves rather than outwardly towards others in need. Competence, for example, someone with first aid training might be more likely to provide help in a medical emergency than someone else without. And finally, altruism, the desire to help others without anything in return. A perfect example of this is what happened one fateful day in 2015. The humble tradie and the man he saved. I guess I'm still here because of him. I wouldn't say I'm here. But on July 2015, Lincoln Sherlock was jumping into the Brisbane River to pull a semi-conscious Shane Wood from his sinking car, then heading straight for work in his wet clothes. Well, the first couple of hours of Bloody cold. He didn't want accolades that day, but today he received another, the Australian Bravery Award. The way that Lincoln dove into cold waters to save a complete stranger is an example of altruism that came with a potentially great cost, even though he doesn't consider himself a hero. Such a selfless act seems to go well beyond the social norms of reciprocity and responsibility, and Lincoln was awarded a commendation for brave conduct by the state the following year. Indeed, there are countless other examples, including people who have literally given up their life to help someone else. Our Good Samaritan storyteller from before, Jesus of Nazareth, is also famously quoted as saying, Greater love has no man than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. We hear these words almost every year on Anzac Day.
But jumping all the way back to those busy streets in China, you know, the fact that I had so many videos to choose from of people helping the elderly cross the road shows how much our society values pro-social behavior. I think the ordinary heroes like Lincoln and so many others are good reminders to ask ourselves. In what ways can we grow in our empathy, competence and altruism so that one day if the situation calls for it, we're the ones giving the piggyback. <laughs>